Hi, Dr. Shook here. In this video, what I want to talk about are physiological stimulators or triggers of autoimmune conditions. One of the major things that we see in our clinic is blood sugar dysregulation or dysglycemia. And it doesn't matter if you have high blood sugar or low blood sugar. What happens when your blood sugar spikes or dips is that you stimulate an inflammatory chemical called interleukin-6 and you stimulate its production. Interleukin-6 stimulates the Th17 system that is part of your immune system. The Th17 system, basically if you think of it as like acid and it's uh, or if you've ever seen um, any of those movies, Alien and the, the saliva that the, that the alien puts off will melt the metal. That's kind of what the TH17 is. It is this very um, toxic, highly inflammatory um, response that it, it creates. So interleukin-6, through these spike and dips, spikes and dips in blood sugar, will promote TH17. You don't want TH17 to be produced because it will promote, it is a, it is a system that promotes autoimmunity. So I just wanted to talk about one of the physiological uh, triggers to autoimmunity. I mean, we, we look for, anytime we look at a patient that has an autoimmune condition or that we're just trying to improve their health, we look for the most foundational aspects of their health. Do they have, so first of all, are they autoimmune and do they have inflammation? If they do, then we use specific uh, approaches to treat the physiology, treat how your body works to improve that. Then the next thing that we look at is, is there anemia? So do you, do you have enough uh, the right size and enough quantity of red blood cells because they are very important because they carry oxygen to all of your tissues in your body and without oxygen your your the cells of your body can't make energy so you've got to have oxygen the third thing that we look at is we look at dysglycemia dysglycemia as you already know poses a lot of problems with the uh, upregulation or increase in interleukin-6 and that stimulates the Th17 system which is like the acid from the alien. Right? So the uh, fourth thing that we look at is we look at your gut and liver. Now we look at the gut and liver because a lot of patients that have Hashimoto's, your, th your, your digestive health actually plays a big role in your thyroid and that's because as what we know about uh, neurogastro Neurology, so the nervous system of the gut, is that most of your nervous system is actually in your intestinal tract, and whenever you have inflammation or you have, uh, in, let's, just, let's just say this, inflammation of your intestinal tract, it can become leaky and porous, so you can actually leach proteins, bacteria, and things in through the intestinal wall into the bloodstream, which is on the other side, that shouldn't be there. That promotes autoimmunity. That's actually the leading theory on how autoimmune conditions begin. So your gut, it plays a major role. So we look at that. That's our fourth priority is gut and liver. And we look at the liver because it is involved in so many chemical processes that they're just countless. And it's extremely vital at the conversion of T4, which is the primary hormone made by your thyroid gland, into T3. And 60% and of the thyroid hormone that's made gets converted in the liver to T3, which is the most active form in your body. So if you're, imagine if your liver wasn't working properly, you, you wouldn't have much T3 and you could have symptoms of a low thyroid, even if your quantities, <clears throat> pardon me, of T4 were normal and your TSH was normal. So the and then the last thing that we look at is we look at fatty acid metabolism. So we look to see, are you absorbing your fats? And we can do that a number of different ways, but that's really important because your, your fat and, and the fat itself that you consume dietarily is important for all of your hormone production, for the integrity of your cells, because every cell in your body has a wall. That wall is made up of phospholipids. Those are fats. So you have to have adequate fat, you have to absorb it. And then one thing that's, that's also key with fats are your fat-soluble vitamins. Those are vitamins A, D, E, and K. Those are all fat-soluble. Without absorption of those, you're going to be deficient. So I just wanted to share some of the physiological triggers of autoimmunity and um, so that you would be more aware if you're having problems regulating your blood sugar, that's something that absolutely has to be addressed. And we use a lot of protocols and, and uh uh, nutraceutical support to help you figure out you know how to do that so that we can transition you into being um, eating you know the, a, a diet that's not a specific diet and not using any kind of supplementation we want you to be healthy but you got to get your blood sugar under control that's going to promote autoimmunity